Hello, back with another beer review. So today we have a beer from Unity. It's a Canada Celestial Visions, a black IPA at 5.8%, so quite low ABV for any kind of IPA. Um, I love a black IPA. A black IPA as dark and mysterious as the depths of the cosmos. A rich blend of dark and light malts accompanied by Cascade and Azaka. So yeah, a black IPA is essentially an IPA brewed with dark malts. It still uses pale malts, which is why it still has the pale in the name, you know, India Pale Ale. Um, so you get off to get all these people to go, oh, how, 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 how can I, how can I black berry be called pale? Mm, and, but it's, it's nothing, the reason IPAs and pale ales are called pale is nothing to do with the colour. It's to do with the kind of malts used. So that's the reason why. Because quite, quite a lot of West Coast IPAs aren't actually that pale. You know, quite a lot of English IPAs aren't actually that pale. So... You know, because it's usually the people who drink the English IPAs who uh, say that. But anyway, Black IPA, Celestial Visions. Um, so Unity, interesting case. Unity from Southampton a Brewery, they did, you know, obviously it's, it, these are challenging times for a lot of breweries. Unity did go under. Uh, we, you know, it looked like we had lost Unity as a brewery. Uh, probably getting on is it back end of last year early this year um yeah, i want to say back end of last year unity went bust essentially uh along with a lot of other breweries with the challenging times they're facing under this tory government but but they were saved by i think some local businessmen and yeah and they came back and to continue brewing. So I think they're still independently owned, you know, technically, um, as far as I'm aware. Uh, so still craft brewery. And so, yeah, interest is the first beer I've had since all that happened. So it'll be interesting to see. They were always a pretty good brewery I, from the beers I've had in the past. So it'll be interesting to see that quality is still there. So yeah, let's get this open into the glass. We've done, we've done enough on this one. Like I said, I love a black IPA. Yeah, terrible pour. Look at that, awful. But it's yeah, well, black ivy is kind of almost the cross of a um, behind me. It's even worse than usual. Um, kind of the cross of a, a basically a porter or a stout and an IPA essentially. Um, so you're gonna get the lots of the roasty, toasty, chocolatey flavors as well as the hot character. So let's go in for the smell. So yeah, this is definitely leaning on the malt side from the smell. Getting lots of chocolate, licorice, coffee, roastiness. I can't say I'm getting a huge amount of the hops. Maybe, there's maybe a little, little bit of lemon. Maybe a little orange. But, yeah. Oh, the head's dissipating quickly, so it makes my paw look less shit. Let's go in anyway. So you do start to get a bit more of the hoppiness on the flavour. There's a little bit of pine. Sort of. But there's not a lot of hot characters. It's, you know, they haven't... My initial thoughts is they haven't really struck that balance. A little bit starting to come through a bit more now. There's a little bit of grapefruit. But the malt is dominating. It's nutty, toffee, chocolate. 
roastiness, toastiness. A little bit of resin. But it's definitely leaning for me more to the malt. To the black side than the IPA side, if that makes sense. But it is a very it's a very tasty beverage, you know. Actually, I am starting to the hops are starting to come through a little bit more now. Initially, I think I think you know those sort of dark malts are always going to dominate the palate, and they do so in this. But you do, yeah, you just need to be patient and wait for the sort of the hop character to start to come through a bit more. Because I am starting to get a little bit of. Maybe stone fruit. God, if people hate that word, don't they? Stone fruit. You know, yes, fruits with stones in. Um, I suppose cherries technically are stone fruit, though. Well, and obviously, you never mean cherries when you say stone fruit. You always mean peach or mango or and stuff like that, don't you? Apricots and whatnot. But yeah, you know what I mean. A little bit of peachy just coming through a bit now. Also a slight smokiness. Yeah, that's that's tasty. That is tasty. It sort of develops. You can say it's sort of quite structured as a bit. It, it sort of develops as it sort of settles and warms up in the glass. Um, like I said, initially, it's the. I do think those sort of dark malts do drown out the hops, but once the hops come into it, it does start to balance out a bit, and it does make yeah for a very nice bipper. So yeah, thank you for watching. Please drop us your thoughts below. Give us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.